Right. You're saying that is true. I mean, we're allowing BP to then turn around and control this. Yes, this is WPIO, WKFA FM. Can I help you? Okay, thank you very much. Well, you know what? That's thank you very much for saying that. I think it's a great idea. Thank you, Randy. Folks, those of you who have uh, not been listening, um, those of you who have just tuned in, I've got Kathy Beeren here. She's uh, from, the, from the Hernando Beach Seafood Incorporated. And Kathy, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us what you're all about? Yes, uh, my name is uh, Kathy Beeren, as you said. Um, I am a commercial fisherman's wife, and we also own a marina, and we own a uh, wholesale retail, also business, um, selling fish. Um, I've kind of become the voice of the commercial fishing industry of Florida from Key West up to Panama City right now and uh, I've gotten very involved with politics which isn't something I've ever been very comfortable with but it's kind of become a necessity and doing what I can to inform people and, and help them to know what's going on, what's, what's happening um, in the industry um, right now and what's happening with the oil spill because there's a lot of things not being told to people out there. Thank you very much, Kathy. And folks, if you're out there and you, you feel like calling in, you can ask Kathy uh, a question or you can uh, speak of your own experiences dealing with the Gulf. Our number here is 352-796-6213. So please, by all means, this is WKFA FM, 89.3 FM. Our number is 352-796-6213. We're talking about the oil spill Gulf, the Gulf oil spill, and... Uh, if you feel like you have something you want to impart to the uh, listening audience or ask Kathy, please, by all means, do so now. No problem. Um, you know, one of the things I want to talk about, um, people are probably wondering at this point, okay, these are commercial fishermen out there working on this bill. This doesn't really affect me. So I kind of want to hit on some of the things that are happening to people living in the homes that have nothing to do with touching the oil or the oil spill. Yes. Um, one of the things that uh, Kendra had commented on today, and also uh, Tracy when she was here in town, um, she lives 40 miles inland. Now she's on some sort of a waterway canal type thing, but 40 miles inland. Um, at the mouth of that river where she lives, or really? you know, waterway, they were saying the oil was starting to come in. Wow. But that's about all that they had seen. Now, the dispersed oil, you don't really see. That's right. The dispersed oil becomes cloud-like. And the worst thing though, hey, I still, the dispersed oil is going to go under the barricades. The dispersed oil, yes. It comes down underneath the surface and it, oh. it goes in it, right. It, it defeats goes the inside. barricades. It defeats the barricades, yes. Wow. So here's, you know, so Tracy no thinking she's fine. Yeah. Her family's fine. Her grandchildren's swimming in the canals. Yeah. Thinking that everything's great. Oh. They're listening to the news. They're trusting what they're hearing. Yeah. And what happened was, her grandchildren had been swimming day after day after day, and all of a sudden, one day, something didn't look right. No. They took a paper towel, they put it down into the water, they pulled it out, and there was oil in that paper towel. Her children had been swimming in that water for two days before they ever noticed that there was oil in that canal. Yeah. The dispersed oil, you don't necessarily know what's going on. People there are getting headaches, sore throats, rashes, dizziness, vomiting, and stomach putting, aches. And your kids are going in there. And they're getting into I want to say to again, toxic. she's 40 miles inshore. Now, Holy crow, and we're 40 miles, and you would think a river is going to push, right. the right. river's going to push the water out, and nothing could possibly come up, but how right. wrong is that? And plus she was, you know, she was trusting that the information she was being given was correct. And yes. that was a sad part, she wasn't, they weren't given the correct information. That's right, misinformation, and I've said this before, uh, not on this radio show, but you know what, any kind, of, according to, uh, Sun Tzu and the Art of War, deceit is the biggest part of, of uh, war and uh, misinformation is a part of it, of propaganda. And I'll tell you folks, this is actually a war against the people in Florida going on right now. BP's activities are not friendly. Uh, I, you know, I agree with that. I, I really, you know, when BP came in, um, Ricky was saying the other day, and they said, I think something like, we will make you whole. You know, that's what they heard at the Exxon Valdez spill 21 years ago. And the sad part is that the things that didn't work with that oil spill were allowed to still be their preparation for an oil spill here in the Gulf. 
that's some serious business when you turn around and you have the same plan as somebody else had. I mean, that's, you know, we don't, if you were going to a wedding and you were flying in, you wouldn't fly in last minute and hope that you can skid in on the wedding. You would have plan after plan of, well, if this should happen or if this should happen or if this should happen. I mean, we're talking about people here. Well, what, and about, what about the hair? They don't care about the people. Why aren't they using the hair? Well, this is very interesting. Uh, BP owns all these booms, these regular booms. They don't own hair booms. Um, we were all told that don't worry about donating your hair anymore. The hair booms don't work. Ricky told us that they um, it wasn't actually done as a test subject. It just happened to happen. They put out, there was a beach. They knew that oil was going to be coming in that night. They put out a regular boom attached to a hair boom, one right next to the other. Woke up the next morning, the regular boom, oil on the beach. The hair boom, stopped the oil. So wasn't it one the half of the booms. sound, one half of the sound was, was owned by it was a, beaches. a fisherman? I, I can't remember how that went, but I know I know it was definitely two beaches, but one, the hair boom worked, but and how, right next to so it, BP, the other one so, so here's the deal. BP owns these regular booms. So I guess every time they use a boom, they can take a huge tax write-off and say that, you know, this boom is $500,000. They don't want to spend any more money. You know, well, that's yeah, one of the things we said Even the people that are donating, morning. even the people that want to right. donate the hair booms, they're not going to make, BP makes money if they use a regular boom because they're writing it off for much more than it's costing them or something of that nature. Is that how that works? Do you know? I, I really don't Somehow know. Somehow they're making a dollar. You know it, folks, because if they can get a hair boom donated for free by people and they're turning it down, there's a reason why. Because apparently these do work and it's been proven. It has been proven that it works. Ricky said that she saw it for herself. And, you know, there's there's other, it's very sad. There's not a ton of cases, but there are cases from people that were in that spill in Alaska where to this day, they can't work. I mean, they're considered um, basically like handicapped. Um, what happens is this oil, and these dispersions attack the nervous system. Once the nervous system basically fills up to the top, it can't take anymore. So what can happen is people can't be around any kind of smell. Like they might smell someone's perfume in a store and become violently ill or have a, uh, you so know, it's a like, respiratory type attack. It's like sometimes a person has a really bad hangover and the next day something that smells bad just makes them sick. So they've got this permanent toxic it's waste permanent. in their bodies. Now there's things they can do. There are centers, there's only a few of them and people are talking about opening more and this needs to be done like ASAP, especially in Florida, yeah. um, where they can go in and they're treated. Now it's not fun. I think it takes like six weeks. Yeah. They go in, they have them from what she told me, like ride a bike really, really hard and sweat and then they right. they take something and they sort of like, oh, if they shock up to their neck. And anyway, really? then they take them, they put them in a, like a sauna oh, and they just have to, you know, like a sauna yeah. and make them just sweat and sweat and sweat and sweat and sweat and they, you know the hope is that it will kind of untoxify or detoxify Detox, force their their bodies wow. but you know at this point you know our concern is you know my husband's on that list too to be able to go and we're getting to the point where we need to do something you know um bp is promising all this money that whatever the loss is for that month they're going to give you Everyone we know in Florida, since they just opened up some centers, there's one in, um, I know there's one in Naples, there's another one in Clearwater that just opened to be able to go in. Um, they're not giving people from anywhere we've talked to over $5,000. It doesn't matter if your loss is $20,000, and what they're saying is, well, later on you'll get another check. But nobody we know has gotten that second check. Right. Um, if they don't have it through into their computer properly, you can go to the bank, and we know a woman who for a week straight couldn't cash her check. And, so, you know, you don't even want to even be put in that position to begin with. And then, you know, you start feeling like you're a nobody. You know, you can put in this position where they've got you yeah. by the, you know what. Yeah. And um, people don't want to go do this cleanup. And then they're put in a position where they can't even put on the proper equipment well, to stay safe. let me ask you safe. a question. If, if That's you, wrong. If a person gets paid, don't they have to provide BP with a whole bunch of personal information? They have to give them uh, the last three years of taxes. Um, they also have to give them the uh, trip tickets from the last three years. We did have our concerns. I mean, we talked about it last night. We actually sat down. Um, so they, they know more about you than you know about them. And they can do all kinds of background investigations. The and thing that, yeah, the thing that's scary about the whole thing is that we're feeling like, you know, who's to say they're not going to take the information that you know they're asking for and then later on try to prove that you don't have that money coming and then right. they, later on they when you do do this big yes um, class action suit that they don't come back and say well we don't believe that you have a case now what's interesting is um, Valdez spill they gave them 5,000 at the beginning that was it so we're feeling like okay well this is good 
But um, 